All right, anyone else? Uh, I ask you to stand and stretch a little bit as our special singer comes. And uh, you can set us back. It is a pleasure to be here. My first trip since I made it North Carolina. <laughs> I promise that's what I thought it was when, when I first saw it. But uh, it's a tamatla, right? right. Y'all sit down. We're going to have a good time this morning. All right. Songs are great. 
So I pray that the message in these great songs will bless your heart this morning. And uh, let's just allow the Holy Spirit to fill this place and we welcome Him Amen. in this service. Without Him, folks, we're nothing. Amen? Amen. 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 Well, I got started. My name is Bob Sellers. I'm from a, uh, I'm from a town uh, not near as big as, 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 uh, as are we? We're not Murphy. Murphy anymore. Well, we're in Marble. Or we're in Tomorrow. Well, close enough to Murphy. Okay. Well, I'm from a town called Gordo. <laughs> that matter where I go, people laugh. When I say <laughs> You'd laugh harder than that if you ever visited, which you'll never do, by the way. Uh, I didn't go there on purpose. My mom and dad took me. <laughs> but uh, it's just on the other side of uh, Tuscaloosa, Alabama, and that's where I've uh, made a home all my life. And I'm uh, blessed if, if she keeps me. Uh, a few more days, June the 6th, I'll have been married 23 years to my high school sweetheart. God has given us uh, three children, two girls and a boy. And uh, I, I stand before you, Blair, a very, very blessed man this morning. And uh, thank the good Lord for all that he's done in my life. Amen. Amen. But I want to go back. I got started singing when I was, I, people ask me when, I don't remember when it was. The first time Mama ever drove me up, up uh, drove me up that old upright Kimball piano that we had in our home and, uh, and, and and told me what I needed to be doing. And uh, then we'd go down and we'd present right there at Faith Church in front of all, about 20 people. <laughs> my sister and my mother and I sang a, a little church trio. And that's how I got started singing gospel music. And one of the, how many of you, how many of you love the Kingsman Quartet? That was always my favorite quartet growing up. Uh, my other one, my, my two favorites were the Kingsman and the Cathedral Quartet. You love the Cathedral. Yeah. Well, this one, this one was uh, just Glenn Payne's song, and this is one of those first songs that I can remember singing in church with my mom and sister. I want to do this, this one for you. See how many of you remember one called The Prodigal Son.
We survived all of that. Just a few days later, they decided to have a prayer vigil in the National Cathedral. It sits right across from the White House, basically. They call that the Nation's Church, which I kind of always thought was odd because of the Catholic. And, well, we left the Catholics to come over here and establish our own country. Oh, boy, we still there. <laughs> But anyway, they call that the nation's church. And so I'm watching this live on television. We've got a we've got a we've got a prayer we've got a prayer vigil going on. They had they had the rabbis come. They had the Christian pastors. They had the bishops. They had the the Jewish uh, well, that was a rabbi. They had the Hindu priests, the Catholic priests. They had the Muslim imams there. And I got to watching that for a while. And it occurred to me that they were basically all saying the same thing, Brother Harold. They were all soliciting help from their God. Did any of y'all remember watching that? And I never once remember, even from the Christian pastors that were there, I never remember once hearing about the blood of Jesus Christ. And I thought, this isn't doing a bit good. This isn't doing a bit good. And you know it didn't. Because we have been on nothing but a downhill slide ever since. I won't sing any Merle Haggard songs in here this morning, but we are like a snowball. Amen. <laughs> and it's because of sin. It's all because of sin. What does what does God's word say? Uh, woe unto them who call evil good and good evil. We're living in a world today where everything's good, it feels good. Mm -hmm. If you say it's not, then you're a big or you hate this one or that one or that group or this group or, or that sort of thing. 
Folks, we, we got we to gotta stand strong. We got to stand strong. It doesn't matter what this world throws against you. And this one, well, this Bible in my phone is the only one I got this morning. But it's the Holy Word. It's even the King James Version. That's my, that's my pick. I believe every word from front to back. Yeah. And it tells us that these things are going to come. This shouldn't take any, any Christian by surprise. And, and if the Lord, if, if, if God tarries sending Jesus back for us, it's just going to get worse and worse and worse. That's right. Yeah, we should still pray. We should do all that we can. Because our goal is to reach others and keep them from dying and going to that was saying. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm glad to be here again. I'm going to say that, especially on your Decoration Day. Um, I know at Decorations around home, boy, that's a big deal. Folks come in that uh, maybe haven't been to that church in, in years. Maybe they come in from out of town and uh, they, 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 they clean off, they cut the grass, they uh, uh, whitewash those headstones out there, get everything looking good, put fresh flowers, new flowers on the wall, and Put fresh flags up and, and that sort of thing. And, uh, that's that's a big deal around home. I'm sure it is around here. Decoration day. And uh, one thing that we always do around home is remember those who are no longer with us that, that have been so pivotal uh, in, in in this church in years gone by. Uh, Brother Allen, and I was speaking about. He he's got a he's got a precious bride who, whose body some some form of is laying out there in your cemetery. Brother, she's in paradise right now with Jesus Christ. Just like that thief that hung next to him and said, Today you'll be with me in paradise. Not thousands of years from now. Now, one day, I believe they're going to come back with him. Something's going to come out of that grave. I, I, I don't understand all the ins and outs of this, but something is going to come out of the grave because the word says it, amen. amen. And we're going to meet Christ in the air, and I believe we're going to meet all those who have been waiting on us since years in the air. And we're going to put on a brand new celestial body that's never touched sin, never seen sin. And we're going to go. We're going to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Well, Stuart, we're still here when that happens. Now, that's a homecoming. That's a homecoming. Decoration, whatever you want to call it. I don't care what they do with my grave. If I've already gone on, they won't need to decorate it anymore. Amen. Amen. But I want to sing a song. Now, in honor of those, uh, all those who have gone on, I was, I was so blessed in, in my life. Um, my grandfather, like most of your grandfathers, was my hero. He was my fishing buddy. He was my hunting buddy. He taught me so much about life, and uh, he was my riding down to the hardware store or Perkins Grocery on Saturday morning with him, and, and listen to the old men sit around and talk about the weather and talk about the old women and stuff. <laughs> but he was also my pastor and I'm so thankful for that but long before he was a pastor uh, his God was a bottle he was an alcoholic he was, a, he was a very sick and addicted man he wasn't a bad man, he wasn't a mean man but he had become an alcoholic and I want, I want you to know at 49 years of age Jesus saved his soul and uh, some years after that he surrendered to the call of ministry. My grandmother had been with him a long time already. Now, this is how we did it uh, back then, especially down in Alabama. When they married, he was 17, and she had just turned 14. Mm -hmm. so, so she had grown up with him. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and she thought, she threatened to have him committed. She thought he was losing his mind because there was such a change. And, uh, but, but he meant so much to me. Cancer uh, riddled his body. Uh, I think for years, but it went undiagnosed. He was he was finally diagnosed on a Thursday, and he went to be with Jesus the next Thursday. And uh, that was in 2000. In about 15 years, I was on the road with the Kingsman laying in my bunk one morning when I got word that my grandmother had gone to be with him. And, uh, boy, I just cried. I remember looking out my phone. I don't remember where we were, but we were 800 and something miles from home. And uh, I was crying. I won't, I won't be home. And, uh, but then it hit me. She's not gonna. She's not gonna. She's not gonna fall and break her hip anymore. She's not gonna have to have any more surgery. She's not gonna have to spend 21 days in some nursing home facility trying to rehab and get better, and, and only to have setbacks and, and, and more falls and more surgeries and go through all that. And and she's also gonna get to be with her daddy again. But oh, he's gonna introduce her to the one that made it all possible. She 
and said, Jesus, face to face. And I couldn't be sad anymore. I could not be sad anymore because I know what the Bible tells me about heaven. And guess what? My granddad and my grandmother, I only had one set that I ever knew. They never, they never heard of a Chinese election infection. <laughs> They never heard uh, a lot of things. Uh, that, old, that old saying they'd be spinning in their grave, I guarantee you. <laughs> sometimes I hope, they, I hope they can't see what's going on down here sometimes, but uh, I, don't know. I don't know. But I want to sing this song in honor of all those uh, loved ones of yours, and I know you, you have many who've gone on, and I hope and pray that you know in your heart of hearts that you're going to see them one day and spend eternity together. If you don't know that for sure, we can we can show you how today before we leave this place. I, mean, we, I can't save you, folks. I don't have that power. Brother Styles can't save you, but he can open the Word of God and he can show you this morning how that you know you have eternal life. Don't hope you got it. He can show you how that you can know you have eternal life. Amen. 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 But no one I know about heaven. No way I pray my precious grandmother, and grandfather, friends go on, loved ones. I bet the trumpets play and the angels sing very sweet refrain of amazing grace and the heavens hands open up the gate and the children ask when they saw your face.
reports at the doctor's office, you name it. Issues with our family, issues with our jobs, issues with our, our churches. Y'all never have problems, do you? We, uh, see, I'm a Baptist too. I you know, can't fool me with that. Um, but one day, all that's going to end. Maybe, do y'all got a gospel, uh, gospel music radio station around here? Debbie yeah. Debbie. Okay, good, good. Yeah. That's the one you're on. Good, good. Well, I hope y'all have heard this song. And if not, rattle some cages and ask him to play. It's called When I Close My Eyes Here. I love the message in this song. <laughs>
1984. 1984. I'm glad I had a Christian mom and daddy. I made sure I was in church. Amen. 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 They didn't. They didn't tell me how to live. They showed me how to live. I spent 22 years on the roof of my parents. I I never heard the Lord say anything. Heaven forbid if somebody else had come in and done it. My mom, my daddy, but my mom too, I guarantee you, would have put a boot in there. I know what they I never saw any type of violence. Never had the police call in our house. Never saw one drop of alcohol in my parents' home. Those things weren't allowed. It wasn't going to happen. And I didn't always seen a whole lot of that. But I can guarantee you I did that. I can get, because I was hard headed enough anyway. I sure to think where I'd be without that foundation of my mom and dad. Christian mom and dad showing me how to live and live for God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, brother, I mean, I can tell already that y'all aren't used to getting out of noon. But we didn't talk about how long I was supposed to go. Okay. Or tomato. Or tomato. Let's start. I get to do it. Let me introduce this young man. He is basically the same age as my oldest child. And I tell you what, if, if I had a few thousand uh, people around the country that thought about half of me as much as this young man does right here, y'all see my face on the cover of Singing News every morning. <laughs> uh, I appreciate it more than those. It blesses my heart that to, to have a, a 22 year old young man uh, that is in love with this style of music, and uh, he helps me. In fact, he's the one that contacted this church, correct? I did, yes. And, uh, the Holy Spirit put it all together, but uh, including you being born and everything else. But I, I, I really believe that, by the way. I don't know if it works that way, but I believe when we get to heaven, uh, it's possible we could stand in front of a, of a big whiteboard of gods, and there'll be push pins, and the dots will be connected, and and he'll say, "Look right there. You see that right there? When 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 the doctor came in and shook his head, you didn't know what in the world was going to happen." You, you, you wrote yourself off. You worried yourself sick. But, but look, that's what led to this. Oh, and look right here. Look right here. You, you were losing this job. You were losing this job. You had a wife and, and kids that you were the primary breadwinner that you had to support. And you had that big life insurance policy you were still young enough to afford. And, and the company even had one on top of that. For you. And the old devil started telling you how much more you were worth to your wife and kids uh, than you are alive. But, but, but look, look what happened next. And I think everything is going to be connected. You know, I love that I love that scripture that says, For now we see through a glass darkly, but one day we'll know as we are known. Look about that. As we are known. God knows everything about us. We're going we're gonna to go it all. I know some folks think they know it all now, but they don't. <laughs> but I appreciate Will making the contact that helped make today possible. His name is Will Tyson, and he resides in Hazel, North Carolina. Hazel. All the way from Hazel, North Carolina. <laughs> I appreciate you, brother. He, he helped me out a lot. Hey, let me tell you what he did last night. He works at this place. Now, you talk about fancy. This is, this is fancy in Gordo, Alabama. He works at the Brasstown Brasstown Valley Resort and Spa. Valley <laughs> Resort and Spa. And he said, "Come on by. I got some. I got some insider perks, and I'm gonna feed you if you'd like to come. A prime real all you can eat buffet." And I said, "Does a cat have a kind of you?" <laughs> and, uh, today's service almost was not possible thanks to Will. <laughs> uh, let, let me let me do a song. Now, I, I've got a request to do this song tonight. Now, I didn't have any plans on doing it this morning. But I, I want to sing this song. Uh, you heard me say something when I was talking about that whiteboard. And I actually lived through that one time. Or I actually lived through it a couple times when I was in the back of business. Uh, when you're in corporate, dog eat dog, corporate America, you, you're the golden boy at the Christmas party and everything's going good. But the next year, things slow down and they start talking about getting rid of you. And I went through that twice. And 
And the, and the last time I went through it is the reason I'm here today. Because I started praying, God, I, man, I, I've been through this before. I, I've, got a, I've got a finance degree from the University of Alabama. I'm the first one in any family of mine on either side I've ever known that was afforded the, the privilege, and I don't take that for granted. I'm thankful for that before. It's the first one in my family to ever, ever get a four year degree. And I, I, I know you've I know you've allowed that and that, that was in your will. And, and this is just why I, I thought you had to plan for me. But I'm so tired of this. I love what I did. I just didn't like the pressure and the quotas and the, that sort of thing. I said, maybe, just maybe, you got something else out there in the store for me. It might not have anything to do with what I did. Y'all better be careful when you talk to God earnestly. Right. He may just answer that prayer. Yep. Uh, and he did in my life, boy. I got a call that, that, that changed my life. It changed my life. It was Ray Dean Reese with the Kingston Quartet. And I filled in for them. I got to know some of those guys a little bit. I had a local quartet of my own. I worked all week and sang all weekend. Hardest work I've ever done in my life. So you probably know. Mm -hmm. And um, but I, I filled in with him so he, he knew me and, and he called me and said, uh, do you have a passport? That's, that's the first thing he asked me. I said, no, I don't have a passport. Why would I need a passport? <laughs> Any of y'all know Ray? Uh, well, I, I need you to go to Canada with us. <laughs> he didn't even get a passport in like two days, and that doesn't happen. So, boy, I, I don't know what, but they lit some fires or something, and I got that passport. And I thought I was filling in again for about two weeks. I, I took all the vacation days. It was the end of the year, which we what, they kind of frowned on anyway, taking vacation days around Christmas. And, and I finally told him, I said, Ray, you, you don't have to hire me because I'm about to get fired. <laughs> and uh, so I went up filling in for about seven years. I, I didn't know when I first started filling in that the lead singer was leaving. But uh, the lead singer was leaving, leaving and I was, I was auditioning and didn't know it. If I had known it, I'd probably been so nervous I'd never get it. But, uh, God, God lined that up. And, uh, and uh, now let me tell you, I still run into people running home, particularly to this, to this day. They'll say, well, Aren't you glad to be back home? And I just, I, I quit trying to explain. I said, yes, sir. I sure am, sure am. I never moved. Can I tell you, it's a long way from Swan, North Carolina, to go to Alabama. It's 480 miles. I drove that up here and back every week for seven years. And that's what happened to my hair right <laughs> But I just, my, my wife's a school teacher. She has all the patients in the family. She's a sixth grade school teacher. She's been there 20, 30 years. And my kids were uh, teachers? Yeah. My, my kids were rooted in the community and in school and, and that sort of thing. So I never got peace about, about moving. And the more I did, the more uh, it wasn't so bad. And, uh, I drive a little. I still did. Did y'all see my, I still did. Did y'all see my bus? Yeah. I got, my, I got a Honda Civic bus. I only one in gospel music. I know of a Honda Civic hybrid bus. It's 48, 49 miles to the gallon. And I put about 65,000 miles a year on it. And uh, I tell you what, it's, it's, a, it's a blessing to be able to travel like that, that cheaply. And, uh, and still get all this stuff in it. That amazes people too. But, uh, but I did that. did that for seven years. And so I, I, I say, yes, it's good to be back home. Then I had a man one time ask me, well, what are you doing now? Uh, you, you, you sing on what? You you just, uh, I guess, after you sung on the for seven years, you don't need to work anymore. <laughs> but y'all don't have a clue what gospel singers make, do you? <laughs> Can I tell you, it's not what bankers make. <laughs> I, I had a social, this is the truth, and I'm, I'm, I'm bragging on God when I say this. I got a social security statement after I've been with the Kings of the Year. And in the comparison to the previous year, we had made $35,000 less. And my wife and I looked at each other and said, now, if people don't believe in God making a way, how else could we have done that? That's right. Because as I stand before you right now, folks, it's just like this past year. This, this corona bug, well, it was coronavirus. It was coronavirus until... Somebody discovered coronavirus on a Lysol king. Y'all remember that? Ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was coronavirus. Yes. And then uh, the, the face, Facebook, Facepo, I call it, 
The place Sapo started putting flags on everybody that said, oh, coronavirus has been around here. It's all I saw then. I said, no, no, no. So they changed it. They made it something spookier and never heard of. COVID-19. <laughs> Well, that shut everything down. I, I, I sat at home uh, twiddling my thumbs for months. And what in the world am I going to do, Lord? And man, can I tell you, he provided in ways that I could have never That's right. of seen yes. coming. Yes. And you know what? It's not because there's one thing special about me, folks. It's because of everything is special about, about him. Him. That's right. About him. And I told you I've been through that a couple times before. You know, it's kind of like everything else. When you've been through it two or three times before, time number three or time number four isn't near as bad, is it? That's right. I kind of thought in the back of my head, you know, God, you've always taken care of me. You're going to do it this time. Yep, that's right. Amen. And he did. And he did. He'll never leave us nor forsake us. Right. But I'm not, I'm not a prosperity preacher now. I like some of these shiny hair, shiny tooth fellas on TV that you profess the name of Jesus and all your problems will disappear and your bank account will just overflow. <laughs> <laughs> That's not, I haven't found that in the Word of God yet, and I see a lot of good people go through a lot of bad things. And, and, and a lot of times, people that aren't really grounded in the faith, or, or especially unbelievers, say, uh, well, why does this, why would this God of yours allow something like that to happen? Why would they allow something like this to happen to a child? Or like, something like, why would they allow somebody to suffer through some type of illness like this? The enemy. The enemy. But also, God's ways can find the wise folks. We think like men and like women. God thinks like God. And we're not on the same way. I don't know exactly where it is in Isaiah. You, you probably could help me out, Pastor. But it talks about afflictions. And, and, and it says sometimes, if I, if I can remember it right enough to even paraphrase, these afflictions come so that God can receive the glory. You say, well, the God I know and love would, would, would allow an affliction to come on somebody so that he can receive the glory? It's what it says. It's what it says. But, what else came out of that affliction? These, these tragedies that we hear of, yeah. When a young person gets uh, gets their life cut short in an automobile accident, how many times have you heard about one, two, six, a dozen or more young people getting saved? Maybe that child was saved and she's in heaven now. You see, I, heaven thinks about death for a Christian different than we do. The Bible says, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Hey, my friends Jeff and Sherry Easter are saying it's party time. They're having a heavenly time when saints call home. Hey, it's, it's a celebration up there, boy. It's, it's a homecoming. It's a, like that song of Prodigal Son. Like the Father prepared that best that he had. Best that he had for that one coming home. Hey, they have a party up there in heaven when a saint comes home. Amen? Amen. God doesn't make mistakes. God doesn't make mistakes. And if I had my table and my, and, uh, and my table cloth out, God kind of gave me a, a little a little logo, if you will, when I first got started in my solo ministry uh, of a little winding road with a little spot of sunshine at the end. And that's the way I envision some of my favorite scriptures in all the world. It's from Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. It says, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not into thy own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him. And he might. <laughs> He'll think about it. No, no, no. It says he. Don't you love it when the Bible says shall? When it says he shall. He shall direct thy paths. Now I've read versions that say he shall make thy path straight. Can I tell you this morning, you can be on a straight path and it might not be directed by God. You might go to the tip top in your company, but it might not be directed by God. Trust Him and put your faith in Him, and He shall direct your paths. Whatever you face right now, and I know because I talk to enough people. And and can I can I tell you this? You're looking at one. You're looking at another one that's going through something right now. 
told you about three children, two girls and a boy. Got one in a few days, will be 21 years old. Got one in a couple months, will be 18. Got a little boy, he's my shadow. He still thinks I'm the coolest thing. He's my fishing buddy, my travel buddy. He's usually with me during this time of year. In a few more months, he'll be 16. Do y'all want to know something to pray about? Y'all pray about me. <laughs> but uh, they've all been raised exactly the same, which is in the admonition of the Lord, taught right from wrong. I've tried my absolute best to be parents to them, just like I was talking about my parents were to me. Not just tell them, not just teach them, but show them in our daily lives. And my oldest one bears a little resemblance. Starting about two, three years ago, she began to break her mom and her daddy's heart in two. We've had to give her the path of tough love after so many times doing the same things, grinding her, taking this from that. I showed up to get her from college. She had a four-year ride at a university. And she just turned 18 years old. And more problems came up. I showed up to get her. She wasn't going to have any option in it. We worried about college later. I had to get her home, Brother Harold, and focus on getting her mind right and getting her heart right and getting her back in church and doing all that we could for her. And I was met by three campus police officers that reminded me she's a legal age and she doesn't have to do anything. In just a matter of months, and I found out later, <coughs> and some of you with, with young teenage children that may be graduating high school soon and considering going off to college, I'm not telling you don't let them, I'm telling you to pray about it. Because there was, a, there was an elderly man that worked with kids just like her on that campus and he told me that over 70% of Christian kids that leave home and set foot to reside on a college campus, absolutely abandon, completely walk away. <coughs> I think the college campus is one of the most corrupt entities that this world has ever known. I really do. Um, my grandfather felt that way, and he was the wisest man I knew. I've ever known. He knew the Bible better than any I've ever known. He had a fourth grade education. He quit because he, he was needed back home on the farm. Plus he got made fun of for having holes in the knees of his own. Mm. Can I take you back to the time when he saw me for the first time with holes in my jeans that came from the store that way? <laughs> <laughs> Let me, let me shorten this. Uh, and I'm sorry. I don't, I don't mean to keep you folks, but I just feel like somebody in here needed to hear that today. I don't often tell that. Uh, where I go, it's very personal, very private to me and, and my wife, but that young lady needs your prayers. You may not remember her name, but God does, and I would certainly appreciate you thinking about her and lifting her up to the throne of grace. God Himself. I mean, any Christian can do that 24 7, 365. Amen. Amen. And I know that some of you parents are going through the same thing. You've got children that, in your heart of hearts, you question, Am I not made a profession of faith as a young child, follow through and believe in baptism? I hope, I, I, I hope and pray that if she were to leave this life right now, that I would see her again. But it's the hardest thing in the world to not know that for sure. Some of you are going through that. You don't know for sure about your own children. You don't know about your grandchildren. <laughs> Some of you don't know about your parents. Friends, other lovers, don't quit praying for them. Don't quit praying for them. I will love her to the last breath I take. To me, she'll always be that firstborn child of mine. I can remember 
a nurse wrapped up in a blanket for the very first time and holding her in one arm. Big blue eyes that she had. And she was still adjusting to the light, folks. And when our eyes connected, that was a love like I had never known before. You love your parents. You love your friends and family. You love your spouse. It's a brand new love when you have that first child. And to me, she's still that little girl. You young people, I, I'd seen cowboy here to go flatten your tires, so I thought you were going to be your parents that way. <laughs> you butt heads with them, and you fight them for one reason, because they love you, and they want the best for you, and they have been there and done that. So when you get to thinking that the people on Twitter and on TikTok, and on Snapchat are right, and your mom and dad are dumb, you're wrong. You're wrong. Your mom and dad are right, whether you like what they tell you or not. When these things come along, are we going to worry ourselves to death? Yeah, it, it tears me up. I pray every day, but I still have to make a choice. And I choose to trust the Lord. Master, may I be so honest? Could I admit the way I feel? I'm hurting. It seems like you've forsaken. God, I wonder if your love for me is still real. Though my friends think I am happy, unaffected by this trial, they can't see the pain I hide just underneath my smile. My soul, I can't live this way anymore. So the
discouraged when the sun will not break through. This mystery that I face today is part of a greater plan. Remember the whiteboard and the pegs I talked about? I believe that. I believe that. If I didn't believe that, then I don't believe the Word of God. Because Proverbs 22 and 6 says, Train up a child in the way that he or she should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. You know, for now we see through the glass properly. I want to say, now, Lord, what's that old part mean? How long is it going to be? How long is it going to be? But I know, because His Word is true, and I know how my child has been raised. And I know how, if your child was raised that way, your grandchild, your parent, they know better, they know the Word of God, and they just run, they just run. One day, one day they're going to come back because His Word is true. Amen. He never, never, has ever. Total Amen. 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 Well, I'll tell you why. Goodness gracious. I got a feeling y'all have a new strategy here. A lot of Baptist churches I say in, they want to get out in time to beat the Methodists. Y'all want the Methodists just to get on done and out of the way. <laughs> it's going on one o'clock. Brother, I'm so sorry if I have gone too long, but I tell you what, it's been it's felt good here this morning. The Holy Spirit has been with us. I know because I felt him going across this stage. It's my hope and prayer that you felt him where you are today. And if you did, I would love to remind you, folks, it's not because of this old bald head he'll be from out of It's the Holy Spirit. I give my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ all praise, all honor, all glory. Give him the praise. I've got, uh, I've got some CDs with me uh, today. My latest one includes that song and several others I did today. And uh, I've got four in total back there. I also, if you have one of these fancy, fancy brand new automobiles that didn't come to CD player, I've got I've got something called a thumb drive, and all four CDs are on there. Don't ask me how it works; just find a hole that that thing fits in in your dash somewhere, and plug it in, and then <laughs> and then I start singing. But uh, uh, y'all come by and, and see us, and uh, they're normally fifteen each, two for twenty-five, three for thirty, all for forty on the thumb drive. They're all four for twenty-five. Those are cheaper for me to get, so I'll pass that on to you. I've got Sing News Magazine if you'd like to subscribe to that today. And uh, <clears throat> hey, I, sometimes I fail to say this, but again, I brag on God because He's allowed me to. I'll probably give away nearly as many CDs as I sell. If you want some of this music to take home with you, or to be a blessing to you, or to share with someone else, if you can't afford it, you let me know and you won't leave here without some of my music today. God bless y'all. I love you. That's good. Make that good. Amen. You brush for the church. Tell us, tell us something about your grandma. Some of these folks who know Well, they probably will. Uh, how many of y'all went to the dentist office down at Murphy Medical whenever Dr. Garrison was down there? The undoubtedly, you know my grandmother. Her name is June Ledford. She worked down there up until I was born. The only reason that she retired was uh, my mom taught at, at uh, Hayesville Elementary for 35 years. She retired. Literally about two weeks before you know, the world fell apart with, with the Chinese election infection. Uh, she said that if she had not retired when, when she did, then this would have you know, just caused her to just say, I am done. I am done. But my grandmother's name is Jim Ledford, and she, and she was one of, uh, of, a, of a Dr. Garrison's assistant, so you may, you may remember her. I'm her grandson. My name is Will Tyson. Oh, as long as the Cherokee cow. <laughs> and cowboy, yeah, that is most certainly a first, but uh, I thought that's what he said. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but no, I I am absolutely blessed to travel with Bob as much as I can. I don't get to go with him near as much as I would like, but uh, he is one of my dearest and dear and dearest friends. I love him to death. And Pastor, thank you so much for having us. It's been a blessing. Well, um talking about the decoration, I look back for the coronation. We crowned him king of kings, Lord of lords. You enjoyed the service this morning? Amen. 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 Amen.
tell you what I want us to do now. Usually we don't do this, but today I feel like I uh, need to. Uh, usually I just set the, the basket back on the table and if you've got a little talking, you'll drop in and do that. I think we're going to do